Okay, AP Chem, let's go over the first lab. So we have sodium bicarbonate, H NaHCO3, um, and it is decomposing of one out of three possible ways. It's either becoming NaOH and CO2, or it is going to decompose into sodium oxide, which is Na2O, and CO2 and H2O, or it is going to decompose uh, into, instead of sodium bicarbonate, just sodium carbonate, Na2, uh, CO3, and CO2, and H2O. Then you had to balance them. Uh, the first one is already balanced. Uh, the second one, you would need uh, two here and a two here. And the third one is balanced with just a two in front. So um, now then what you did was you basically uh, found an initial mass before heating and a final mass after heating. So um, I'm just going to... Um, make up, you were told to go for about two grams. So let's say you got 2.585 grams before, we're going to say before heating. Oh, my picture's in the way. Before heating. Okay. And there's a couple ways to do this. There isn't just one um, way to do this. Um, first thing I want to remind everyone is matter is not created or destroyed. We do know that uh, the CO2 is in gaseous form at this temperature and pressure, and the water is also in vapor form at the temperature and pressure that we're dealing with. However, the sodium hydroxide, sodium um, oxide, or sodium carbonate would all be solid at the temperatures we're dealing, temperatures and pressures we're dealing with, and so is the sodium bicarbonate. So, a couple ways to do this. Let's remember with matter not being created or destroyed, the mass that we put in should equal the mass that comes out. And so if we add up the molar mass for this, remember it's 84.01 grams per mole, uh, and that's just adding sodium, hydrogen, carbon, and three oxygens. If we do the molar mass for sodium hydroxide, we get 40 grams per mole. And CO2, you probably have this memorized, 44.01 grams per mole. And lo and behold, 84.01, yeah, it matches for 84.01. So what goes in is what comes out. Now, if this is what happened mathematically, uh, what percentage of mass did we lose? Well, this is the part that's left, and this is what we started with. So we could really go 40 uh, over 84.01. 0, 1, and we're like uh, times 100. So we're at 48%, right? We're not quite 50%, 48% uh, percent. Now, what is that? 48% remains, the rest is lost. This would be your 52%. 52% would have been lost. This is how much would remain or yield out of that. Um, and Percents are kind of a quick way of looking at it. Let's continue with that. If we do two moles of this, uh, that would be 168.02 grams per mole. And we do the molar mass of this guy, uh, what, 61.98 grams per mole. Two carbon dioxides would be 88.02 grams per mole. And a single water is 18.01 grams per mole. And notice that, yes, the mass is the same on both sides. If 2 is the route it went, this mass is not existent, right? Because this is left the building. This is left the building because they were both gaseous. And the CO2 has left the building. That's why we only did 40. So, um, um, over what we started with. So here we wouldn't include these. We would do the 6198 divided by 168. Um, and we get what? 37%. 37%. Okay. So that's 
it's not half. We get like 37%. Um, here we get 48%, not half. So we can kind of compare, this is before heating. Let's say after heating, we get, I don't know, 1.585 grams after heating, right? So this is the part, this is the whole, what would have left, we don't know, but percentage is a way you can make a pretty good guess. Let's do, let's keep going. This one would still be 168.02 grams per mole. And we got what, 105.99 grams per mole. If we do the molar mass of this, 44.01. I'm back to 44.01 because only one mole of this is needed to balance, right? Grams per mole and 18.01 grams per mole. And if I look at this, well, 105 over 168, that is, I would have 63% of my original mass still there. So if this is what I got, in my calculator, I can do the 1.585, oh, turn my calculator on, 1.585 uh, divided by 2.585, and uh, I'm looking at, what, 61%. So 61% is uh, remaining. So that kind of knocks these two out of the running. That's one way, remember, you have to pick. And hopefully everyone realized that number one is not it. And the reason number one is not it is because we definitely saw water vapor. There was definite condensation. So that's why experimentally you wouldn't pick this one. You wouldn't pick this one independent. Experimentally, we didn't see any water vapor. I mean, we saw water vapor in there and there is no water vapor in this choice. And 100% there was water vapor in it. So we're really down to these two. If we just look at a percent change in mass, uh, now it's not a, a terribly precise because there can be some errors and um, significant calculations. We're using pretty much just round numbers here. We're not taking into account the precision we can get if we stick with mass. And uh, a lot of you either used to the thousands place. That just blows my mind. So takes a gram and it divides it by a thousand little pieces, right? So you use some pretty nice balances. And if we want to really kind of um, get the precision out of that lab equipment and be able to say for absolute certainty which way it is, um, percent is not is not a bad way by no by no means whatsoever. It's a great way. But there's another way we can do it that one that we're a little more familiar with, and that is stoichiometry, mass to mass stoichiometry. And remember, if you go mass to mass stoichiometry, it's three steps. We're first going to go from mass to so mole. Then we're going to do mole ratio. mole ratio, and then we'll go from mole back to mass, right? So it's a three, three stepper. So what mass would we start with? Well, we can start with what we put in. Um, and uh, before heating, before heating, we can start with what we put in. So if we put in 2.585 grams of NaHCO3. Well, first we have to convert it to moles. So dimensional analysis, one mole is 84.01 grams, right? That's gonna get us to mole. And then it's mole ratio. Well, here is where we will uh, figure out We'll do this for each equation and figure out which one we want to do. So let's do it for the first equation. The first equation is for two moles of NaHCO3. For every two moles of NaHCO3, I should make one mole 
of Na2O. Yeah. And then we got to go from moles back to mass again. Well, one mole of Na2O is 61.98 grams. Right. When we cancel, what we've done is we said, well, if we put in this many grams, we should get out how many grams, right? Uh, and this is if it's this decomposition reaction. So in my calculator, 2.585 times 61.98 equals divided by 84.01 equals divided by 2 equals. And I get, uh, do, 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 and I went for 0 0.9. Five three six grams and a two o right so if it decomposes according to this formula if it decomposes according to here and i put in two and a half grams and it's following this recipe i should only get out just under a gram of my sodium oxide well experimentally I got more than that, but this could be from error. This could be from error. I'm not real sure how that would be a lot of error. Um, so going this way, it doesn't quite confirm uh, that the second choice is it. So why don't we do our mass to mass using the third choice? It's all going to be the same, 2.585 grams NaHCO3. Got to convert it to moles first. One mole is 84.01 grams. And then I need my mole ratio. And it's the mole of NaH, CO3, which is what we're starting with. And if it's this way, it's for every two moles of this. Again, it's one mole. But this is sodium carbonate. Na, Na2CO3. And then I will use the molar mass of sodium carbonate and one mole of Na2CO3 is 105.99 grams. So let's do this one in my calculator, 2.585 and times 105.99 equals divided by 2 divided by 84.01. Uh, 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 270.9. Oh my gosh, I screwed that one up. Okay, 2.585 times 105.99 equals, then divided by 84.01 equals, then divided by 2 equals. I get 1.631 grams of Na2CO3. This is a lot closer to 1.585. Lot I don't know why it puts my picture there. Uh, one point this is a lot closer to 1.585. So if this is the mass to mass stoke I pick, I get closer to what I actually got experimentally what I actually got experimentally. Um, experimentally, 1.585 is 61% of 2.585. In theory, it should be 63%. I'll take that difference. I will take that difference. So with pretty, with pretty good confidence, I'm going to say the decomposition of the baking soda occurred this way. And I can justify it either using percent composition I could justify it using mass to mass stoichiometry. And the first part of my justification also is ruling out choice one because there was no water vapor. But the difference between choice two and three, we're looking at uh, differences in percentages and then pretty significant differences in stoichiomet stoichiometric relationships. So. I hope this helps you guys out. I really do.
And now I just have to figure out how to turn this recording off. So, boom, boom, boom. Well, come here. Come here. There you go.